Meerkats are carnivorous desert dwellers who belong to the mongoose family. They can live in groups between 2 and 30 members. There tends to be a dominant male and female as head of the colony. They are a cooperative breeding species in which they demonstrate altruistic behaviours within the colony. The sentinel behaviour in meerkats, also called the raised guarding position, is a behaviour carried out by helper or non-breeding meerkats. This position seems to rotate around the group with no particular structure or order, as no individual can stand guard for more than two hours, and it seems to be taken up upon noticing it's empty. As they often forage far away from their homes, the risk of predation and other possible threats is higher, and this watch guard behaviour is undertaken to ensure more safety while the rest of the group forage and play. If a predator is spotted, the meerkat calls out a distinctive barking noise to warn the rest of his group of the danger. The calls can be different sounds and pitches depending on the type of predator and level of danger present, and on sounding, the meerkats rapidly return to their bolt holes, small hiding places they create throughout their territory which provide quick cover. To observe this behaviour, we travel to Hazelhead Park Pets Corner, where they keep meerkats. When we arrived, we observed the meerkats for 30 minutes and noted how many times they displayed the sentinel behaviour. We also noted the time and weather conditions during our observations. The research process began after our behavioural observations. We researched information about the behaviour and Tim Bergen's four question. In 1963, Nicholas Tim Bergen defined four questions to explain animal behaviour. These questions include ultimate and proximate questions which we will explore and apply to the sentinel behaviour of meerkats. Tim Bergen's mechanism explains behaviours in terms of what the behaviour actually is and how it's performed. Clutton Brock in 1999 showed that meerkats chose to perform the sentinel duties and suggested the behaviour was only carried out when they were already full from foraging. This was supported by evidence of the meerkats guarding and showing the sentinel behaviour even when the area they habituated was safe from predators and the majority of their time budgets were spent guarding regardless of threat presence. Therefore, the ability to locate and store food could be a main mechanism underlying motivation to guard the community. One other mechanism suggested as to why meerkats perform this behaviour is related to oxytocin levels. Oxytocin is a peptide hormone and neuropeptide created in the hypothalamus and that contributes to social bonding, sexual reproduction and childbirth. A study carried out by Madden in 2010 found that by administering oxytocin to the meerkats, social behaviours such as digging, feeding pups and guarding were enhanced. Levels of social aggression conversely decreased as well. The following figure shows a graph of the proportion of time a meerkat stood in the sentinel position on guard for a control group and one with injected oxytocin. As you can see, the levels of guarding carried out by the meerkats overall had a mean significantly higher than in the control group. Function, also known as adaptive value, describes how a behaviour relates to the animal's life and reproductive success. It was originally referred to as survival by Tin Bergen when he explained behaviour as having evolved as a means of survival. The role of sentinel behaviour is shown to increase survival within groups as some meerkats look out for danger while others forage for food. Larger groups tend to be more advantageous as the work can be divided amongst the individuals. As well as guarding and foraging, they can all help by rearing pups, which allows less energy to be spent per member as the tax tasks are divided up. This helps increase their reproductive fitness and makes this altruistic behaviour more worthwhile. However, larger groups can also create more competition. There are several theories to explain how this altruistic behaviour has arisen. These include kin selection, reciprocal altruism, selfish sentinels and genetic links. The theory behind kin selection is based around the term inclusive fitness put forward by Hamilton. He stated that their altruistic behaviour would be favoured more by natural selection. The inclusive fitness theory states that an individual can gain fitness through the breeding of non-descendant kin by kin selection. According to this theory, each individual tries to evolve such behaviours that will maximise their inclusive fitness. This theory also links with the idea of the selfish gene, which suggests that an individual is designed to ensure genes are passed on through potential offspring that may not be its own. 
So altruistic behaviour may have evolved at the individual level due to selfishness at the gene level. The idea of this as previously mentioned, those who perform the sentinel role can be considered selfishly motivated. It has been found that the sentinel has a lower predation risk than the foragers, therefore providing themselves with a direct benefit. The graph further justifies this by highlighting that foragers are double the distance away from the hole compared to the sentinel, so if danger strikes, they can dart to safety quicker. Graph A shows the time sentinels spent looking at the group and away. You can see more time spent looking away rather than concerning themselves with the danger in the direction of the foragers. Graph B shows the average distance from the burrowing hole. On the other hand, the behaviour could also be seen as altruistic because the sentinel does sacrifice vital foraging time to look out for danger. Overall, this potentially selfish action could increase group survival. Evolution attempts to explain how the behaviour has evolved and how selective pressures change the behaviour of animals over evolutionary time. Through examining phylogenies of close relatives and animals that inhabit the same environments, we can compare differences in behaviour on a genetic level. The evolutionary causes remains unknown, but scientists continue to refer back to the two main theories of evolution, whether it's altruistic or selfish. Furthermore, the behaviour is thought to have developed singularly in these animals, including the meerkat. If you compare a meerkat to its close relatives in the mongoose family, some of these relatives prefer solitary lives and others prefer cooperative and social lives, except incidental behaviour such as the dwarf mongoose and bandied mongoose. Additionally, species such as the pied babbler, which inhabits similar desert environments, also display senental behaviour for cooperation while breeding. In 2010, Ridley found that pied babblers increased senental behaviour when predation simulation increased. Overall, this highlights that senental behaviour will be performed more when the benefit is more, i.e. they have a higher chance of surviving if they look out for prey. In the wide open terrain of South Africa, it makes sense that there is safety in numbers. Over evolutionary time, natural selection would have eliminated any meerkats that were not quick enough to make an alarm call and initiate the run for safety. Additionally, meerkats that were too vocal and called false alarms would have allowed predators to follow the noise and locate them. The last of Tim Bergen's four questions describes how a behaviour develops over an individual's lifetime. When a meerkat reaches three months of age, it begins to show cooperative behaviours like babysitting, digging, pup feeding and sentinel standing. Sentinel behaviour has been shown to be more frequent when foraging is less intense or when there is a greater threat of predation. Males tend to act as sentinels more often than females, and older individuals act as sentinels more often than juveniles. Scientists have inferred possible ways of cultural transmission in meerkats. One study has found that there was an observable teaching process in wild meerkats, highlighted through the transfer of skills in prey handling from helper to pup. From this, a similar form of teaching can be assumed in meerkats, applied to learning other skills such as this sentinel standing. As previously mentioned, there has been recent studies to show a strong correlation between oxytocin and pro-social behaviour, an example being this sentinel standing behaviour. This discovery may explain and contribute to our current knowledge of how this trait develops. Overall, sentinel behaviour is taught by members of the group to young meerkats. However, oxytocin also plays a large role in the behaviour. The sentinel's role, whether altruistic or selfish, highly increases the group's reaction time to get to safety before a potential predator attacks. The fact that it has evolved constantly through the animal kingdom suggests it is an effective method to avoid predation.